Bruce. What's your thoughts on Javante Tank Davis versus Frank the Ghost Martin? You know we're a Detroit boy, so we expecting your input. All right, I got you. Uh, I think this should be an exciting fight for the first uh, four or five rounds. You know what I'm saying? Uh, very entertaining. That's at the most that I see it being actually uh, competitive. But I think what people really want to know, does Frank has a chance to beat somebody like Javante Tank Davis? And, you know, as history goes, you know, you usually fight somebody like Tank Davis before you get into the ring with somebody like Tank Davis. Because Frank Martin doesn't have the back end experience to me to beat somebody like a Javante Tank Davis, which means the money that they offered him was good. So that's why, to me, he took the fight raw. And that is that Tank Davis has the experience. He may be able to touch him up a little bit, he may be able to confuse him a little bit, but at the end of the day, I don't see him stopping Javante Tank Davis. I don't see him knocking out Javante Tank Davis. So therefore, everything is in favor of Javante the longer the fight goes on, you know, because he doesn't have the back end experience. And experience is where Javante Davis shines. Javante Davis has the higher IQ to be. You know, he's going to be better at setting things up. He's going to be more composed. He's going to have more patience. He's been there before and he's been in tough battles and he went 12 rounds. I don't know how many 12 rounders or how much back end experience Frank Martin got, but whatever he got, it is not enough. So, like I said, usually when you fight somebody like Tank, you know what I'm saying? You're going to fight somebody similar before you get in there if you're really trying to go in there and pull off the victory. But like I said, that just means the money that they offered him is good. So the fact that he's going at it now, Frank Martin may say, you know, they said the, they said the last thing. Uh, who was that? Uh, man, I, man, I forget his name. Uh, the dude that looked like Ali. A lot of people was telling him not to take on that fight or whatever, or whatnot. But he said, I did it, and look what happened. So you know, what I'm saying people can say whatever they want. But however, this is a different ballpark, and you have to understand this: if you go 12 rounds with Tank, you know. And you manage the last to the end. I mean, you do know that this guy is pretty much the face of boxing, right? You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I always have to, I always have to add an element of corruption anytime I think about boxing. Now I just know if you go to those scorecards, you ain't gonna beat them. You know what I'm saying? They're they're not gonna let you beat them. You know what I'm saying? At least not like that, anyway. So to me, Frank Martin to really beat Javante Tank Davis, he really needed more experience and uh, more back end experience and uh, more experience fighting people like uh, Tank and stuff like that. And that would help him out. Other than that, I just see him being a good, good little fighter for about four or five rounds. And then after that, Tank is going to take over. That's why Tank was calling him uh, Tank was calling him a front runner because he knows on the back end he can close the show. You know what I'm saying? So what does that mean? That means Frank is going to have to start early and Frank is going to have to look for a knockout, which I don't think at all he can pull off. I don't see him hurting him. I don't see him stopping him. And I don't see Javante Tank Davis quitting. So for the most part, it's all in the bag for uh, Tank Davis. He has experience. He has the IQ. Now, this is the other thing that I found very interesting. And if it was somebody like me, I would pay attention to this because I would try to take it, take advantage of every advantage that I know of. And it's something that Javante Davis said that I just found interesting. He said that he was nervous fighting Ryan Garcia. And I was like, he was? You know what I'm saying? The guy with only a left hook? You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, we all knew you was going to beat him, but yet... Tank was still nervous about Ryan. Now, this is what I want to put on people's mind. If he was nervous about fighting Ryan Garcia, you think he's not nervous about fighting Frank? It's almost impossible. You know what I'm saying? Versus if you fought a guy who you just said just had one punch and that's the only chance he had, which was pretty much true, but yet you were still nervous of the outcome... You can't tell me that Tank is not concerned about fighting Frank Martin. Now, me, I'm going to take every advantage that I can. You know what I'm saying? Which lets me know that any confidence that he... Sometimes when people are overly aggressive or very confrontational, it's because they're scared. You know what I'm saying? They're actually concerned about it. And they don't like feeling that uncomfortable feeling. You know what I'm saying? So they be over aggressive with it. 
versus he's looking at somebody like Frank and saying, look in his eyes. You see, he ain't ready. He don't believe in himself. This, 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 that, and the third, you know? And although sometimes that can count and sometimes it can't, but in this scenario, I would have played into that. If I knew that you were scared of going in the ring with Ryan Garcia, you most definitely scared to go into the ring with me. You know what I'm saying? I have to play that out in front of the press conference and in, in, in front of you, in front of the face-off, I'm just not gonna be calm because I know that um, you have a chink in your armor mentally. You're questioning yourself. In front of the cameras, you're super confident. You know what I'm saying? Just like we thought he'd be super confident with Ryan Garcia. He was talking a whole bunch of cash shit. Yet it's still behind closed doors, he was nervous. Being that Frank don't got the back end experience, being that Frank don't have the experience he need, period. You know what I'm saying? At this point, you need to take advantage of any advantage that you might have. So if you need to question his mental or put his mental in, into question to try to weaken his game or something like that, that's something that you definitely need to do. Because the one thing that I always said that Javante Davis should have more confidence in himself uh, about his abilities. It's starting to catch up now but the fact that he's been babied like that, don't think that that don't affect you mentally. He knows that pretty much he's been carried, or let me not say carried, very extremely good matchmaking. Tim Brown, uh, 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 John Brown over there, the, them dudes, the way they match tank up, they, they, they got an excellent matchmaking team. You know what I'm saying? So Tank knows that. So that's why I, at the end of the day, that's why I bring up the whole Pedraza thing and they didn't think he was going to beat Pedraza and all that. And that's why Tank was acting up because his team didn't believe in him and stuff like that. So it's no wonder when it came to people like Ryan Garcia, he was questioning or he was nervous about it when really he shouldn't have been. He should have been extremely confident. Now, he appears to be extremely confident against Frank Martin, but that can't possibly be the case if he was talking that crap against Ryan, but you were still worried about him. But nonetheless, Tank got everything he needs in space. The only thing I'm saying about Frank is, if I was to know that mentally, that's how he felt, I have to play into that to the press conference because I need every advantage that I can get and you gonna need it. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, it's Javante Tank Davis. Cause like I said, even if you can't beat him, you can't beat him. You know what I'm saying? Which basically you lose, lose, which is why that check was exactly what Frank liked. You know what I'm saying? It, it it was to his liking. So they made sure that they paid him for that. So he went ahead and took it. Now, to me, if he was serious about it, you know what I'm saying, whatever and whatnot, he would try to build himself up a little little bit more. But, you know, uh, he's going for the gusto. He, he needs the cash. And um, if he honestly believes that he can beat Tank, I'm sure. Man, hey, man, go for it. You know what I'm saying? But Tank has too much experience. And Tank ain't got no weak chin. You may be able to score on Tank. But as that fight go on, it's going to favor Tank. He's probably eventually going to end up setting you up, going to feel that power, end up knocking you out because I don't see the other thing happening. But like like I said, it should be a good little competitive fight for about four or five rounds. After that, it's pretty much a wrap. That's my thoughts on that. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm out.